Hey guys, it's Wife Who Gate today. Uh, we'll be going over another weekly uh, analysis for decks. Uh, usually, what I do is I go right to Goldfish. I click decks. I click meta game here, and then I click on the standard league, like the most recent one, and I pick five lists that I think are kind of interesting or that we haven't uh, covered in a long time. Like I haven't covered mono green, mono red, or mono white before ever. I think I've done Sacrifice like once or twice, or maybe it was Knights, but to get the gist of it, uh, we just go over the decks, kind of um, analyze like why it's popular, why it went 5-0 potentially, or however its record is, and how's it going, Stacey? Um, all of that stuff, we just kind of cover it, what I would change with the main deck, the sideboard, etc. And if I like the deck, if I'd ever play it, or how, how well positioned I think it is in the meta. So we'll dig right into this. I also do this for viewers, uh, for their list. So if you wanna drop by on a Thursday is usually when we record these, um, and you have an idea or a deck that you want some feedback on, free feedback. You just uh, link me the list and we go over it in the same fashion. So if you want your list analyzed like this and to be included on YouTube, um, feel free to drop by, it's free. Uh, you don't even have to be a follower for the stream or YouTube. Uh, so we'll start with our first list here, Rakdos Sacrifice. Um, and I do this, uh, I think this goes up every Friday, and then the viewer list goes up every Saturday, to give you guys a heads up on the timelines for that. Um, so we've got Cauldron Familiar, so pretty standard. Uh, Dreadhorde Butcher, Robber, Mayhem Devil. So this looks like just regular Rakdos Sack, uh, without the Luris, of course, or without um, Obosh now. So a lot of these lists have kind of... Um, uh, cut the companions right out because it's just too slow of a tempo. I've seen it in Historic, actually, a lot more than I thought I would, like, Historic lists running the Luris and running, um, like, Soul Guide Lanterns and stuff still. Um, three Castles, so the land base is pretty standard. Three Castles plus Fabled for damage with Mayhem. Other than that, it's just the same old list. Uh, four main deck claims. Um, pretty good against Uro. Like, I still see a lot of Bant, Yorians, and uh, Tamir Reclamation will still run, like, two to four Uros. Usually it's, like, two to three. I don't see four too often. Um, we can actually check this list. So, three Uros. So, anywhere from, from two to three, probably, not four, I don't think. Because they don't have anything like Tamiyo, really, right, to dumpster... Uh, extra cards in the yard so they don't really get that online super super fast so what's this deck trying to go well against probably something like tamir reclamation where they might not see the flame sweeps main board or have access to storm's wrath so it probably just looks for really fast games as well like this is probably a nice deck to climb the ladder with because it's just so consistent with uh priest draws uh cauldron familiar ping through damage you know uh, with the Witch's Oven and such. And Claim can really steal some games, especially against opposing aggro lists or even the Mirror Match, like being able to grab their Mayhem Devil and then sack it to your uh, Priest, to your Low Strider, to your Oven. You have lots of sack outlets with this list because there's no limitations on um, on cards because you don't have Obosh for evens and odds and you don't have uh, Luris for uh, you know, stopping you from being able to play Midnight Reaper and Low Strider, so you have that extra sack outlet, so that's really nice. Um, well, that's what I, I think it's pretty well positioned, especially if you're looking to grind the ladder. Um, bad matchups probably include Bant, maybe Bant or U White, um, just because you have access to like Heliod's Intervention, you have access to Knight of Autumn if you're in Bant Yorian. Um, Knight of Autumn poses a kind of an, an annoyance for this deck since it doesn't have the recursion that the Luris list would, being able to play out your ovens again after they get blown up, stuff like that. Um, so I, I think that Bant... Tamir Reclamation is also probably okay against this list just because it has Flame Sweep and kind of stop that early game aggression, but I don't think it has a very good answer to Dreadhorde Butcher, save maybe a timely Aether Gust. Aether Gust for Dreadhorde or Mayhem Devil can set this deck back quite a bit. Or even for the claim, being able to threaten to um, stop the claim at least for a turn for Uro can oftentimes buy you enough time to uh, get an actual counter spell like a Veto or something for the claim. Then you have something like Veto for 
you know, maybe the oven or the claim. It's kind of awkward to run the veto for that, but you get my drift. Like maybe a neutralize is a better example. Uh, just buys you time to get answers. So I think aside from like control kind of getting the better, the upper hand, um, it's probably pretty well positioned. I don't think, it, I don't, nothing's coming to mind on like what a horrible matchup is for this deck. It's pretty even. Maybe like Jund food with Core of Old could be very difficult to deal with since you can't claim that. You'd have to rely on an act of treason, which this deck doesn't pack in its sideboard actually. So we've got duresses in the sideboard. So this is for control. Um, probably Dant, you white, grab that shatter, stop them from clarioning if there's like a Jeskai deck for some reason. Like maybe Jeskai Yorian's still popular for some reason. I don't think it is, but um, you know, just on the off chance, basically grab sweeper. Uh, same thing with the drill bit. So five answers to a sweeper, basically main deck to try to check for it. And then you try to race the opponent. I think with this Rotting Regisar, if you're up against control, um, this thing can kind of race and do pretty well. It's also good against other aggro lists. Um, it's very hard for them to punch through and uh, get in damage when you just have a 7-6 staring at them. It's very, very difficult to deal with. Uh, Emberth, I think, is mainly for the mirror matchup or anyone that brings in like glass caskets. Um, for a sideboard card. Uh, also deals with Jun food in regards to Bolas Citadel, but I think that this list tries to go under Citadel before it even matters, like before it really gets online. Um, and then the Soul Guide Lantern here is probably just for the mirror matchups, uh, Cats, or uh, Zenith Flare, because aside from Duress, you don't really have any answers to Zenith Flare. And they can kind of cast that at instant speed anyway, so it feels kind of bad holding back drill bits and duresses when... Well, drill bits aren't so bad because you can grab creatures or anything, any of their cycling cards, but that still puts it in the graveyard for them, so it feels kind of bad. So, like, Soul Guide Lantern's kind of like your one-of answer to the big Zenith Flare, and then maybe you can swing in and, and get there. It's also good against, like, Uros and stuff instead of having a Graph Digger's Cage since, you know, you kind of have this Witch's Oven, this cat that you want to keep going. It's a good way to um, to get that through. I can hear the green blend coming out, so they're probably going to ask me for my cup pretty soon. Um, do a drink with uh, broccoli sprouts, spinach, and ice. Uh, blend it up with a bit of mustard seed, and it gives you a chemical reaction. Uh, all of that stuff together and blended. Uh, it gives you a chemical reaction similar to caffeine, but it stacks with caffeine. It gives you even a more heightened sense and clarity for thinking, and I've been really enjoying that. It's part of the reason why I'm changing my my stream cycle as well. Back to the uh, back to the focus. It's just in case you hear the blender too in the background, you know what's going on. Um, so I'd say this is pretty well positioned. Um, I'm not sure I would change anything in regards to the meta. Um, drill bits, duresses, both, all of those are good against um, reclamation. Like the worst thing you get punished by is like an expansion on one of your drill bits. So they get to grab something from your hand, which you don't really care about. You're still trading a card for a card. Um, because yes, you don't get to take their expansion from their hand, but they cast it anyway. Um, so you can grab something else, like a wilderness reclamation. So it's still really good. But I think this deck is, is pretty solid though. Uh, Tamir Reclamation, the oldie but the goodie. So this list only runs one Brazen. The list that I was running was running like upwards of three. One Gust main deck, two Negates main deck, one Flame Sweep for the lonely, the lonely Sweeper. That's really crazy to me. And with only one Sweeper in the sideboard, wow. They really believe in that. One Wilt for the Mirror matchup and for Bant potentially, like being able to blow up a... Uh, and Elspeths or something. Um, pretty interesting. Three disputes with the fourth in the sideboard. Yes, fourth is in the sideboard here. So I kind of agree with that. That's fine. I like four or nothing, but I can I can agree with three. Like in a as far as preferences go, if that makes sense. Like I can understand why people would like the three of in the main deck, so they can make room for like the one of flame sweep, etc. Um, four Reclamations, three Typhoons, 29 lands. I think the deck I was running was running 29 as well. I'm trying to compare it just so I have a reference point on what I 
uh, 28. So instead of the extra flame sweep, let's say they have um, an extra land, which is respectable, if you're just looking to combo off. And the land base looks pretty similar too, pretty standard. Two, two castles, no castle Vantress. No, two castle Vantress right here. Um, and I think our version runs four Shark Typhoons, but it could be three. Yeah, four. And three Thassas. So no Thassas in this list. They're running uh, Negates instead, I think. So don't have a sideboard? Okay, yeah, no problem, dude. I will pop that open and put it off to the side here next to Striders. So when we get to the viewer decks, I got you. We just need like one or two more lists for that if you guys uh, in chat still want to submit decks. Uh, come in. And this is for less. green. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, sounds good. So we're getting lawn, is what we like to call it. The uh, spinach. Broccoli spout, sprouts drink. My roommate's being awesome and making that up for us. He's, a, he's definitely the alpha. Awesome. All right, so what are we doing now? Uh, similar sideboard here as well, uh, aside from the comments. Um, so overall, I kind of agree with the choices here, depending on the meta. If you're running into more Teferis, I can understand the Negates main board over the Thassas, uh, especially with the Neutralizes paired up with them and stuff too. Um, looks pretty standard. Um, Two Bone Crusher Giants stands out to me a lot in the sideboard. The one Brazen, we got a lot of ones in the sideboard. But I mean, a lot of those are completing play sets for the main. Like the Brazen doesn't really complete the play set. The two Negates complete the play set. The Aether Gust makes a nice two. Um, the Bone Crusher seems weird to me. Like, I guess against Aggro, you want to also throw dudes on the board instead of just flame sweeping. So maybe the idea behind this is you can block like a Ceratops or something. Um, whereas before, like, you don't really have a good answer to Ceratops or other, like, creatures at four, like Questing Beast. So I can kind of see that. Um, and the Night Pack Ambushers, all, I mean, a lot of people do this, like, three to four Night Packs in the sideboard. Um, I like it in Bant a lot. Love the Bant sideboard with the Night Packs. Feels so strong, so cool. Um, I don't really agree with this. I don't like this card that much. Mainly because it's, like, the... The draw power is kind of okay, but if they have a Teferi on the field, you're still tapping out for six mana to get a like maybe a five five or six six, and they just bounce it with Teferi, man. They don't care, you know. They don't they don't care at all. Um, on top of that, like if they have Narset, you don't get to draw the cards if they have Narset plus Teferi. So I just don't see how this is super super useful against control. Like I can respect the card as much as anyone else, but I just don't agree with it that much for the current meta. Like, in, you can't block the Shark Typhoon token either. You can't swing out at Teferi because they can just chump it because they see it coming, potentially. So, it just feels weird. I do like the two Blast Zones. So, like, overall, I agree with some of, the, some of the choices, like the Flame Sweep here as a one-of instead of two, uh, running more counter spells if you're running into more Reclamations and Mirror matchups. The Gust makes sense. Um... I would like to see like a Narset's reversal come in. Very green. Today. Oh, it's very green. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for dude. Well. So this is the green. For those of you interested, it's uh, broccoli sprouts, spinach, ice, and a little bit of mustard seed. It has a bit of a burn, but it feels good. And it's very good for clarity. So I'm going to sip on this before we get to the next deck. Um... Ooh, yeah, it's burning a lot. Woo! That's a lot. That's spicier than the food that I make, dude. That is ridiculous. <laughs> that means it's working, though. The chemical reaction for it is working. Um, so yeah, uh, pretty good deck. I'd say it's still pretty much the best deck in standard. Maybe not this variation per se. But I mean, person went 5-0, so you got to be doing something right. Uh, mono green. Yeah, Samsoni, how's it going, dude? How have your streams been? And what's up top? How are you doing, man? Yeah, we're switching the schedule up from 2, a, 2 p.m. Uh, we'll, we're switching at 2, 2 p.m. until 8 to 10 p.m. Uh, from now on. I'm going to test it out. Um, see how it goes. Just so I can wake up with my roommates, so I can wake up when there's sun, so I don't have to use the sun orb too much. Um, you know? And it's just more natural. For me, oh god, I didn't mean 
Um, but yeah, we're, we're making a YouTube video right now. It's 2 a.m. for you, yeah. I used to do 2 a.m. for me until about 8 a.m. or 10 a.m. And it just drained me because like it was so weird to force myself to wake up at midnight. Uh, do you have a deck to review, Samsoni? I need one more deck for the YouTube video. Any deck, historic, standard, doesn't matter. I'll give you feedback on it for free and you'll be on YouTube. You have one? Okay, cool. So we might have two. Um, but yeah, if you guys don't know Samsoni, check him out. He's awesome. So uh, here we've got Stone Coils, Pelt Collector, Barkai, Growth. I like the Growth Chamber. Um, personally, I like it with Vivian 4. Um, looks like there's no Vivian 3 heads, and there's one 5. I feel like this is awkward. Um, like, I would almost want to run more Great Henges for those grindy matchups. But I guess if people are running more Elspeths or running more enchantment removal like if some cheeky tamir reclamation players are main decking wilt <laughs> you know um i can understand not wanting to run more okay nice so we got another list here okay cool so that makes i think three um i can shut this off we've got um Rakdos, samsoni okay and then we've got the tokens from someone else so that's cool um and what's this? Oh, this is this is the, uh, part of our YouTube video. Okay, so let's get back to this. So three gem raisers, one extra in the sideboard. That's a lot of enchantment hate. And I usually see at least two ram throughs for interaction on uh, main deck, but I can see not wanting those if your only targets are going to be shark typhoon tokens that you don't care about. Okay, and we've got another one here. And we'll put this over here with the other decks. We've got some spicy stuff. Um, oh, this is for like, this is like uh, into the future. I guess I can still um, review that, but I might not have as much expertise on how it would do in the standard and stuff. I'll tell you if it's interesting, if I like it or not though. Anyway, getting back to this. Um, so three soul guide lanterns, pretty respectable with Zenith flares being able to counteract uh, some graveyard hate for um, to counter the Rakdos list, anything that brings back cats, food, etc. Kind of nice. Um, and we've got Shifting Ceratops, which is pretty standard in the sideboard. One extra Great Henge. So I would say like I would want like one or two more interaction cards main deck. Whether that be like Vicious Hydra to fight things. Vicious Hydra is really bad against... Um, Against claim though, so I could see not wanting to run that. Same thing with the stone coils and stuff, but I mean like you just uh, mutate the uh, the gem raiser on top of the stone coil, so it gets immunity to um, to claim. And most decks aren't running active treason anymore. I know, I know, Strider. I tried. To be fair, I pointed out that I went uh, overall. Overall, I went like 4-3 because we played two games before the event and I think I won both, right? So, still positive. I pointed that out in the video too when I was giving my critique. Um, so yeah, uh, overall I think I would want like one or two more interaction cards, but this deck looks pretty well positioned. Just that you have fast games, so for like ladder climbing I could see this. Maybe in a tournament setting, I might consider making some changes uh, here and there. Like, I'd rather see, like, four Vivians here. Maybe slide this into the sideboard or consider lower curve cards. Um, like, just because you only have 24 lands, I'd be a little scared running a 5 pog. This is usually discounted because of your creatures. So, I don't know if I really agree with that. I mean, you do have Castle Garenbrig to cheap... This, like, Castle Garenbrig doesn't even work with this, so it's garbage. Like, in regards to... To that but getting your creatures out isn't too bad so cheating this into play like i'd even drop this vivians for a second henge even if i wasn't going to run four vivians which i would because of growth chamber just that interaction is really really strong i love it just being able to grab extra growth chambers is, is so good um but if you're looking for a quick deck to grind the ladder with it's pretty good um, what I'll start doing too is including the link to this, like the standard league where I found the decks. Um, and then that way, like people can just click on the list that we kind of review for the, for these. 
And in the other lists, I'll try to uh, include the hyperlinks for the decks as well uh, in the order that I review them and for the viewers too. Um, and that might get a little messy because we have some people going Aether Hub, some people going Goldfish, some people going Cardboard Live, but we'll try to manage. I'll try to, I'll try to get it working, you know? Um, so yeah, overall, I think this is good for quick games. I'd probably change it so I had a couple more interaction cards. Uh, main deck for creatures, aside from leaning on Vivian to do that. Otherwise, it's like, meh. So... I think that this is fine though if you just want fast games and you already have a lot of these cards not great for rotation because a lot of these cards are rotating but uh that's a that's another point like that's something else to consider um mono red aggro so this is an oldie but a goodie uh this has got four ember cleaves 40 dollars worth of ember cleaves here in paper insane those are 10 bucks a piece i think i have a hollow one uh, anyway, getting back to the deck, um, we've got three active treason, no claims, which is interesting. Just active treason, maybe for aggro, maybe for that Uro, that Yorian, just be able to snag that and punch through. Red caps make a lot of sense. It's good against Sakdos because you can just punch the uh, Mayhem Devils um, right in the face and take them out, um, which is awesome. You just melee them down, right? Like BAP. Um, and then they're done. Three mayhem devils all day. If you catch a core of old before they can uh before they can sack anything, which is a great joke, because usually they can sack like three things as soon as he comes down. But in response to the first sacking, you can potentially kill a core of old, which is nice. Um you probably just want to active trees in the core of old though, honestly. Um you also get Phoenix of Ash for those fast matchups. This is probably against control as well just to be able to swing through and get there a little bit faster. And it has recursion, which is something that you normally don't have to deal with for Mono Red. Like when Mono Red comes at you, you don't think, I need that Soul Guide Lantern for this Phoenix of Ash. It's not something that really happens. And the volleys instead of Flame Sweeps, so they can just um, you know, do well in the mirror for Red and do okay against some other decks. I'm not sure what other matchups the Blazing Volley is good for. And maybe tokens, but those have gotten less popular, like Winota, um, since the banning of Agent. Um, and you're not really... I guess you have... Do um, you not have Thane? Yeah, you have two Torabonds, so if you have Torabond, you're able to Blazing Volley for two, because it deals double. Well, that's pretty good. Or does it do two plus? So it does three. So this is like even better than Flame Sweep. Uh, in regards to... Just the raw amount of damage that you get to do with it for Thane. Well, that's pretty interesting. I like that interaction. Um, and then we've got Phoenix for, for control to vault for those pesky Uros. I pretty much agree with the sideboard 100%. I don't know what it's missing. Maybe Soul Guide Lanterns for Zenith Flare. Maybe trim like one Active Treason, one Blazing Volley. You know, just a little trimming for like two Soul Guides if you're running into a lot of uh, recursion there, I would say. Yeah, maybe Scorching too, maybe Scorching for the Arrow, but I think overall that the um, the Soul Guide would be more versatile. Like, it does something that none of the other sideboard cards do uh, at all. So I think I would like that. M21 Scorching, I haven't seen it yet. Um, but yeah, so I would, I would say this is pretty well positioned, especially if you want to climb fast. I would just make room for the Soul Guide Lantern is all. Other than that, it's it's like pretty standard stuff. The deck we've seen before. All right, last but not least, Mono White. This is also an oldie but a goodie with some uh, some changes, some different stuff. I wonder why three instead of four here. Maybe just math. Like opening with three of these would be pretty pretty bad, and having four means that you might oftentimes see like two Castle Iron Veils. So I can see that. Interesting that we don't see like um, any like bonders or anything like that, because with bonders enclave you could very easily draw cards with like Heliod or a big Ajani or Loxodon or something. Um, or if you put any counters on any of your creatures, you could probably draw. But I guess maybe it's just too slow and you don't play a slow game. Like you say, well, if I don't have the unbreakable formation or the fight is one for my creatures to survive a board wipe. 
then I'm going to lose anyway. So, um, but yeah, uh, main deck looks pretty standard um, in regards to mono white, like just a couple of one drops, um, hunted witness for some, uh, like some some presence on the field, some uh, not stability. There's another S word that I'm looking for, sustain, sub, like uh, persistence. Persistence is an okay one, where if they board wipe, you still have something at the end of it. You think it needs more, uh, more Ladin and more Daxos? Okay, I I am not like super uh, versed in the deck. And it's got one two Ajani's, or raise the alarm, which is pretty interesting, because this makes it pretty easy to fight Teferi like a little bit. Like if they go to jam Teferi, you at least get to hit it for one. And if they plus one it, you might be able to boost your dudes to punch Teferi in the face anyway, just to kind of get through. Kind of like that. Um, but yeah, it, it looks pretty okay. I haven't played a lot of mono white, but it looks like it'd be a very fast deck that just kind of takes over games. And it doesn't scoop to board wipes because you have answers to them, so they have to have Teferi plus something else. Um in order to get through, which is cool. Um, and you got Fight as One too. Like I love Fight as One and Unbreakable. I like I like the split there. Kind of interesting. Um, in regards to the sideboard, we've got because this this like fights flame sweeps and stuff too. It's awesome. Same 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 with this. Like it can fight the early game board wipes with one mana. Like when they're just trying to take care of like two or three creatures before they grow too big, definitely punishes um, Tamir for not playing like Storm's Wrath and stuff as well. Like hitting for bigger numbers. Um, like you can just get out of range really, really fast. Um, they have two Leyline of the Void. What? That is, that is interesting. I don't think I agree with this. There's no way to cast this either. Why? Okay. They went 5-0 with it, but that doesn't mean it's good. Uh, definitely Soul Guide Lanterns instead of this, I would say right off the bat. They don't like Cat? I guess not, but I mean, like, come on. <laughs> Let's run a card that isn't dead in your hand. Like, they only have two, too, so, like, it's like, they have to have that in their opener. Or ECD? Yeah, but Soul Guide Lantern, man. Better. Lantern isn't good versus Cat. Yeah, I can see that to a point. Apostle is, though. You already have good tools. Like, why not just run an extra one of these? This thing can eat, like, Cycle, too. It takes a minute, but could. Clothies? <laughs> we don't have red, I guess, or green. But um, I don't know what that card is, actually. That's not Clothies, is it? No, that's a different card. Um, for the colors, yeah. I mean, I would just say, like, take these away. If if your goal is to beat Cycle, take these away for, like, Soul Guide Lanterns. And if, if cats are the problem, put more of these in, you know? Like, put one more of these in, uh, put in one Soul Guide Lantern or something, and call it a day, you know? And Cycle. I don't think you run this. This is a meme. This is a big meme. But two black lens, yeah. Two swamps and sideboard godless shrines or whatever. I don't know. <sighs> Great. But yeah, um, yeah. If you want to run light line of the void, run like pours off. Other than that, I could see how it's well positioned to grind the ladder out, uh, or just to grind events if you want to go fast, because the deck is fast. It can prevent. Uh, blowouts with board wipes via these two cards plus some more in the sideboard, etc. Like, it's pretty good. I would just not run this because this is a meme. So that'll pretty much wrap it up. So I do one of these every week. Um, I do a top five meta analysis. Uh, I just click on standard league. So I'm going to make a notepad right now. Um, that way I can copy paste this and just put this in the description so you guys can see um what decks match up here you can just match the name and it's pretty easy i don't want to copy paste all of these names because that would be like kind of redundant if it's just easy to see them there um 
so that'll be there. Uh, and I do one of these each week where we kind of break down like how decks did in the meta game, uh, why you know what I would change about the decks, like mainly like you know ley lines and meme, like why have this, and kind of go into detail on that. And they're a little bit lengthy these videos, but I like doing them. And if you guys are interested in having one of your own lists submitted, I do another video on Saturday. This one's usually submitted on Sunday, uh, on Friday, the meta analysis for the top five lists for standard usually. But if you guys have a historic list or a standard list you want me to analyze, uh, just drop by on Thursday or drop uh, something in the comments below like, hey, I want to do this list for one of the viewer things. Um, you know, and, and we're pretty flexible with it. You don't have to be followed, subscribed, or anything to the channel. It's just free feedback. So um, whatever you guys uh, want to see critiqued, you can bring it to the uh, bring it to the table, so to speak. So hope this is helpful to you guys. Appreciate you guys chilling out and being patient with me. And um, I'll see you guys for the next uh, video. I make a new YouTube video every single day. So if you uh, like that, if you like the consistency, there's always something new. Um, you know, you can feel free to subscribe and it really helps me out a lot. So I will see you guys uh, for the next video.